On the last part, you created a default Angular application by using the Angular CLI command. On this part, you learn about the default files and folders that came with that command. So when you open the Angular project folder, you are going to see that by default you do have some files and also some folders that are used to run the app. And here we do have a lot of files, so let us take the most important ones one by one. Let us start with the tsconfig.json file. This file has the TypeScript configuration for projects in the workspace. All the other configuration files inherit from this base file. The next file is the readme.md file. And inside this file, you can see some introduction documentation for the root application. Like for example, in here, the first line, it says that this project was generated with Angular CLI version 14.0.4. The next file is the package.json file. This file configures all the npm package dependencies that are available to all projects in the workspace. The next one, the package-lock.json, this provides the version information for all the packages installed into the node modules folder. You can see in here, we have the node modules folder. The angular.json file provides CLI configuration defaults for all the projects in the workspace. This includes configuration options for build, for serve, and test tools that CLI uses. The next one, the git ignore, this one in here specifies files that you want git to ignore. Then you have the editor config, and as the name already indicates, this provides configuration code for the code editors. And then we have up here two folders. We have the source folder and the node modules folder. As the name already indicates, inside this folder, you can find all the data or all the files for all the npm packages that this project will use. The source folder is the most important folder in a project because in here you have all the code that the app is going to use. Let us start with the styles.css. The styles.css is the global CSS file because each component has an individual CSS file, but this is the global one. So anything that you write in here gets applied across all the files. Then you have the polyfields.ts. Just so you know, the polyfields in Angular are few lines of code which make sure that your application is compatible for different browsers. And the polyfields.ts was provided by Angular to help us do away with the need to specifically set up everything. The main.ts is an important file that is used to bootstrap our app. And the most important line in here is the line 11, where it says platform browser dynamic dot bootstrap module app module. So this means that the app module has been set up as the bootstrap module for our application. So when you start the app, the app module is going to be executed first. The index.html is the entry point of the app. And in here you can see that inside the body you have just a single line of code. I'll show you where the app root comes from. So you have the app root in here. Then you do have the environments and here you can define. So in these two files, you can define environment specific data, like for example, like production false. And here you can set production true. You can use this file if you want to store like sensitive data that are different based on the environment. The assets folder is just a folder where you get to keep all the assets of an app. So basically in here you keep any asset that you think is going to be useful in your application. And then the most important folder is the app folder. In here you have the app module. So here on the main, we could see that app module was defined as the bootstrap module by default. Here we have the declaration and the definitions of the app module. And here we have, for example, the declarations. Let's say this module is going to use the app component. It imports a module named browser module. And you can see in here that 
this module exports the required infrastructure for all the Angular apps, etc. You have some more text. You do have in here the providers. And you do have in here a really important line, which is the bootstrap line. And here you can see that the bootstrap file or the bootstrap component has been defined the app component. And after the app module, you can see the app component related code. So this is just a component class. We are going to talk in more details about the components when we create our first component. But just so you know, in the component, the most important parts are the selector and the component name because you'd use the selector in HTML code and you use the class name in TypeScript code. So for example, in our case, the bootstrap component has been defined in the app.module.ts, the app component. If I open the app component, you're going to see that the selector has been defined to be app root. If you go to index.html, you can see that we have the app root tag. So this way, in our app, we have configured that we want to use the app component as the bootstrap component, but that needs to be defined in the app module. And the app module needs to be defined as the bootstrap module in the main.ts. I'll just briefly mention the rest of the files, but we're going to talk in more detail when we create our components. You do have the TypeScript file. So each component has four files. It has a TypeScript file. It has a spec.ts, which is like a testing file for the TypeScript file. Then you have an HTML file. And then you have a CSS file. So each component has four different files. And we have already mentioned that Angular is well known for clear separation of concerns. And you're going to see how useful this kind of project structure is when we add more and more components to our app.